Ten years ago, Nintendo released arguably the most controversial entry into the Zelda series, The Wind Waker. The unique cel-shading visual style, dubbed Toon Rendering, sparked an intense debate amongst fans and critics about the aesthetics of the game. In the end, The Wind Waker went on to be one of the worst-selling 3D Zelda games, despite its critical acclaim. Flash forward to the present, and Nintendo is blowing a second wind into Toon Link's sales with The Wind Waker HD, an enhanced version of the 2003 GameCube game. While other developers have jumped onto the HD remake bandwagon over the past few years, Nintendo really never got on board with the program, making the Wind Waker HD their first attempt. From top to bottom, this is an amazing looking game with an incredible aesthetic that stands the test of time. The HD update only improves the visuals to deliver something truly gorgeous, and the soundtrack has been slightly revamped. It's not without a few signs of wear and tear though. Frequent frame rate drops are all too noticeable, and odd lighting in certain situations breaks the aesthetic consistency by giving Link a more claymation style appearance. But the visuals weren't the only part of the game to receive a facelift. Much of the interface has been refined to take better advantage of the Wii U gamepad, allowing for quick changing out of items without needing to thumb through menus, though you can still opt for the traditional interface with the Wii U Pro Controller. You can also take advantage of the gamepad's gyro controls for aiming in first person, but if that's not your cup of tea, you can stick to the analog sticks no matter what controller you prefer. Wind Waker HD also allows you to move around while aiming with certain weapons in first person, and the increased mobility is a welcome addition. You can move around freely in first person to explore the game in a whole new way, but it's not without its limitations. You can't climb up ladders or objects, and you can't utilize certain actions or items without returning back into the third person perspective. Items that make use of this new mechanic greatly benefit from it, but in general, it's a nice novelty. The only minor headache with the system is trying to aim with the bow using this new setup, which can be frustrating at times if you're using the Wii U Pro. There are other small revisions here and there that improve the overall experience, like being able to share messages online. But there's one nagging issue from the original version that was somewhat overlooked. The tedium of frequently changing the direction of the wind, and the slow speed at which Link's boat moves across the waves. Sure, later on there's a new item called the Swift Sail that instantly changes the wind direction in your favor and greatly improves your sailing speed, but it's an optional item tucked behind an obscure side quest. Given how much criticism was aimed at the sailing mechanics ten years ago, this is a rather significant oversight. Nintendo did take the time to address the other major complaint about the Wind Waker, the notorious Triforce Shard Fetch Quest. Players originally had to gather eight shards from across the ocean, bring them to an NPC, and pay a significant fee to have them deciphered, and then sail to eight more locations to gather the necessary items to complete the quest. It was the very definition of tedious, but Nintendo has improved the process by reducing the charts you have to gather and decipher to only three. The other five charts no longer exist. Rather, you can proceed directly to the remaining items once you reach a certain part in the story. While it's an improvement, it's hard to ignore the fact that the quest only existed in the first place due to time constraints. Nintendo admitted to cutting out dungeons in order to meet the original release date. While the ideas for those dungeons eventually made their way into other games, it's disappointing Nintendo didn't rework the Triforce quest into a new dungeon or two to greatly improve the experience. Or why they still left three charts in the game, rather than making all of the items immediately obtainable once you reach the quest. As it stands, even with the refinements, the segment breaks the otherwise great pacing of the game and feels out of place. The game has some truly spectacular moments with one of the best individual stories in the series, but there are still several flaws that bog down the experience. Sailing the ocean is thrilling for the first hour or so until you realize how empty the sea really is. You'll find yourself wishing you could get to your destination faster. While there is a huge emphasis on exploration, it's hard to stay motivated sailing for so long between the tiny islands that dot the sea. It just goes to show that density matters in a vast, open-world type of game. The dungeons you do find are consistently enjoyable, with unique atmospheres, challenging puzzles, and dazzling boss encounters. While the earlier dungeons are a bit on the simplistic side, the later dungeons, where you team up with a sidekick, make for one of the best additions to the series, a spot of brilliance the series has seemingly forgotten. 
It's just a shame that only two of the dungeons in the game make use of this mechanic, leaving you yearning for much more. <laughs> Combat is fast and frantic, utilizing a unique blend of audio and visual cues to enhance the experience. The Wind Waker was the first game in the series to introduce the parry mechanic, which makes for more intense battles. While it all handles well for the most part, there are hiccups here and there with some cases of odd hit detection and occasional control issues. Otherwise, it's a simple, yet engaging system that set the tone for future installments. It's clear that Nintendo put a lot of love and care into this update, but it's not without some imperfections. It's one of the better HD treatments out there, with lots of revisions and new additions to make it feel fresh. The core experience is still largely unaltered, and with that comes a set of problems that have persisted since the original release. Though it's difficult to overlook these flaws, the Wind Waker HD still makes for a solid game and an enjoyable experience.